Life is composed of molecules, and molecules are made up of atoms. And there are a lot of different kinds of atoms. There's about 116. In life, there are really only a few atoms, though, that make up the molecules of living things. Almost all of these molecules are just made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's just three of the 116 elements. And those three make up about 99% of the human body. There are four main categories of molecules in living things. There's carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Each of these molecules is made up of a long chain of carbon atoms, and they differ by what other kinds of atoms are branching off of the carbon atoms. These branches are called functional groups because they give function to the carbon chain. It's kind of like the players on a hockey team. The goalie and forward are both wearing the same uniform and they're on the same team, but they have slightly different equipment and they have different functions because of their equipment. The goalie's function is to stop the puck and the goalie has large pads and a large stick. The forward's function is to score goals. And so forwards have smaller pads and a smaller stick made to handle the puck. This video is all about carbon chains and functional groups. So what are we going to learn in this video? First, we'll learn about compounds that are composed of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. Then we'll learn about different types of functional groups. And then finally, we'll learn about polymers. Life is composed of molecules that are carbon-based. We humans are carbon-based life forms. Carbon-based molecules are called organic molecules, and organic chemistry is a branch of chemistry that studies compounds that are largely made up of carbon atoms. Organic molecules are generally composed of long chains of carbon atoms that are surrounded by hydrogen atoms. Carbon is represented on the periodic table by the C. It's in the fourth group on the periodic table, and it has four valence electrons. The electron dot structure of carbon would look like this, four electrons spaced evenly around the symbol C. Electrons want to be paired with another electron, and since each of carbon's electrons are unpaired, carbon is going to have to chemically bond with other atoms so that its electrons are paired up. Carbon has four unpaired electrons, so it will bond four times. And the bonds will be covalent bonds, which means carbon is going to share its electrons with other atoms. Compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen are called hydrocarbons, and hydrocarbons make up the backbone of most organic molecules. The simplest hydrocarbon has one carbon and four hydrogens. It's called methane. Methane is formed when four hydrogen atoms surround a carbon atom and covalently bond. Each hydrogen only needs two valence electrons. It starts with one of its own electrons and then gets the other from carbon. Carbon needs eight electrons. It starts with four and it gets four more from the hydrogens, one from each of them. The formula for methane is CH4. And we can make longer chains. Ethane has two carbons linked together, and then hydrogens surround the molecule bonding to the rest of the unpaired electrons. The formula for ethane is C2H6. Propane has three carbons linked together, and the hydrogens surround the molecule bonding to the rest of the unpaired electrons. The formula is C3H8. Butane has four carbons. Its formula is C4H10. Pentane has five carbons. Hexane has six carbons. Heptane has seven carbons. Octane has eight carbons. Nonane has nine carbons. And decane has 10 carbons. Sometimes a hydrocarbon might have branches or rings, or sometimes there may even be double bonds between carbons. Carbon chains come in all shapes and sizes, but function and properties of organic molecules does not depend on the shape and size of the carbon chain. Functional groups are unique groups of atoms that are bonded to the carbon chain. Functional groups are the parts of organic molecules that participate in chemical reactions and explain the properties of the organic molecules. There are five major types of functional groups that are found on the molecules of living things. Remember that a carbon chain isn't really important when it comes to the organic molecule. So we're going to use the symbol R in place of writing out the entire carbon chain. The first functional group is the hydroxyl group. This group consists of a hydrogen atom bonded to an oxygen atom, which is then attached to the carbon chain. Compounds that have a hydroxyl group are known as alcohols. Ethanol, which is the type of alcohol that people consume, is an example of a compound that contains a hydroxyl group. Next is the carbonyl group. This group consists of a carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen atom. This is then attached to the carbon chain. If the carbonyl group is at the end of the carbon chain, the compound is called an aldehyde. And if the carbonyl group is within the carbon chain, the compound is called a ketone. Sugar is a compound that contains carbonyl groups. Next is the carboxyl group. This group consists of a carbon atom that is double bonded to an oxygen atom, but then also bonded to a hydroxyl group. The hydrogen on the hydroxyl group can be removed from the compound as a hydrogen ion, which means these compounds are acids. 
Compounds that contain a carboxyl group are called carboxylic acids. Vinegar, also known as acetic acid, is an example of a compound that contains a carboxyl group. Next is the amino group. This group consists of a nitrogen atom that is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. This compound is able to act like a base and pick up an extra hydrogen ion. Compounds that contain amino groups are called amines. Amino groups are found in molecules that make up proteins. The final group is the phosphate group. A phosphate group consists of a phosphorus atom that is bonded to four oxygen atoms. Compounds with phosphate groups are called organic phosphates, and they are found in the DNA molecule. We've already mentioned the four main categories of molecules within a living thing, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. These molecules are made up of a carbon backbone with a combination of different functional groups. And as far as molecules go, these molecules are absolutely massive. Biologists call them macromolecules because they're so big. They can be literally made up of thousands of atoms bonded together. Most of these large molecules are chains of smaller molecules. The smaller molecules are all linked together. The smaller units are called monomers, and they're very similar to the link in a chain. The monomers are linked together, and as a unit, they are called polymers. Cells work through a process of unlinking chains and then relinking chains to create new polymers. This happens every time we eat. For example, we need to eat protein, and then we use that protein to build and grow our tissue. Our cells unlink the protein chains into individual monomers, and then we put the monomers together in different combinations to create specific types of proteins. When monomers are linked, they go through a process called a dehydration reaction. A dehydration reaction links a monomer to a growing polymer. There is a hydroxyl group at the end of the polymer that will react with a hydrogen atom attached to the monomer. When the monomer is linked to the polymer, the hydroxyl group, OH, and the hydrogen break off to form a water molecule, leaving the monomer attached to the polymer. This is called a dehydration reaction because water is removed during the reaction. When monomers are unlinked, the opposite reaction will take place. It's called hydrolysis. A water molecule breaks the monomer off the end of the polymer, leaving a hydroxyl group at the end of the polymer and a hydrogen attached to the monomer. So did you learn everything in this video? Well, if you did, you learned that hydrocarbons are molecules composed only of carbon and hydrogen atoms, and hydrocarbons make up the backbone of organic molecules. You also learned that functional groups give function to the organic molecules, and you learned about five different functional groups, hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, amino, and phosphate. Finally, you learned that biological molecules are huge molecules called polymers, and polymers are formed from monomers through dehydration reactions. And the opposite of a dehydration reaction is called hydrolysis, which unlinks polymers to form monomers.